One of the biggest surprises to me last November was just how much I liked Apple's new MacBook Air. I knew Apple Silicon would be an improvement over Intel processors, but I didn't exactly know just how much of an improvement it would be before I got my hands on one. And boy, was I blown away when I first got the M1 MacBook Air. However, that's when I first got it. Now, after using it for about half a year, do I still recommend it? Or are you better off buying something else? Or maybe just waiting entirely? Hey, what's going on everyone, Greg here. And before we talk about this M1 MacBook Air, I am once again asking for your subscription. As most of the people that watch my channel, around 80% of you aren't subscribed yet. And my goal for this year is to hit 200,000 subscribers by August 6th. And we are just so close. August 6th is my birthday. And last year we actually hit 100,000 on my birthday. So I would love to hit 200,000 on the same date. So do me a favor, hit subscribe if you wanna see even more Apple content like this, because you're not going to want to miss any of my coverage when we get to take our first look at the redesigned 24 inch M1 iMac which is just weeks away now. And also, I think I'm a pretty nice guy, so come on, just subscribe, please. But anyway, let's get back to the reason you're really here, the M1 MacBook Air. Now this laptop has been a special experience for me because funnily enough, the 2013 MacBook Air was the first Mac laptop that I have ever personally owned. And at that time, it was the laptop that I thought really did most of what I needed it to do. And that really didn't carry over to future iterations of the 2018 era redesign of the Retina MacBook Air, which received lower power dual core chips that really couldn't be pushed to the limit for higher end workflows, such as video editing. That's what I do on my laptop. And I just wanted that Air to do a little bit more. There was some hope with the quad core Intel variants of the 2020 MacBook Air, but even those still weren't exactly what I was after. Sure, the performance actually got a nice boost, but the MacBook Air would still significantly throttle when pushing those Intel chips. And the heat and fan noise generated by that computer when pushing the CPU made it a pain to use for anything more than basic everyday computing needs. So when Apple finally unveiled this new M1 MacBook Air, I was excited because I knew that we were seeing significant performance jumps in iPhone and iPad chips over the years. And I knew that they would blow past any of Intel's weaker chips that were packed into previous versions of the MacBook Air. But my biggest surprise came when I found out just how much of a performance jump the M1 would be not only to those lower power chips when we're comparing them, but even compared to more power hungry processors like those found on the 13 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. In a lot of tasks, my M1 MacBook Air was faster than both of those more expensive machines. And it even beat out the desktop class chips that were found in products like my maxed out 2019 iMac. I am still blown away that an M1 MacBook Air can export video faster than a iMac. It's not computing sometimes when I think about it, but it's just the reality we're living in. That performance was even more of a shock when you took into account the MacBook Air design. Now sure, the design looks similar to the past few iterations of the Retina MacBook Air, and it still does have weak points, like the limitation of just two Thunderbolt ports as your main I.O. However, it's the internal design that was intriguing because this MacBook Air didn't have any active cooling in it. It was like the 12 inch MacBook, no fan inside of it. Now, yes, of course, it doesn't have a fan, so the chip does still throttle when it needs to cool off, but not by as much as you would think. It could still give me the CPU performance I needed, especially compared to the Intel chips that Apple was previously using in their Macs, which ran much hotter and much louder. I still find the MacBook Air such a joy to use six months later because no matter what I throw at this laptop, no matter how much I throw at the M1 chip, it will literally never make a sound. That silence itself is a killer feature because the computer just gets out of the way. It limits the distractions. That's also the main benefit of the M1. It just totally gets out of the way and solves issues that we have been facing with laptop designs for years. Because this MacBook also doesn't get hot, 
You can also use it on your lap as a laptop, as it was designed to be, and it still stays as cool as an iPad. And because it's running at such a low wattage compared to the previous power-hungry Intel chips, it also means that everything you do on this laptop hits the battery that much less. And it's held up long-term. This isn't just an initial wow factor that you get when you first open the MacBook Air and use it for a week, because I am still amazed that the battery runs so long, and if I'm leaving my house, I do what I previously thought was an unthinkable mistake. I just leave the power brick at home because I know there's no way this battery will fail me with a normal day of use. I also don't have to necessarily worry about buying a more expensive Pro laptop because even though the M1 MacBook Pro can do tasks faster, it isn't as big of a difference as it used to be. And the Air is just so competent at any task, whether that's basic tasks or more intensive tasks. And it will also literally make you look at older laptops and start to question, why isn't the battery life running for 15 to 18 hours? Why does this thing get so hot? Why does it sound like a jet engine taking off anytime I start editing a video? And as the world starts to reopen, you can bet that this is the laptop that I'll be using for travel, taking to coffee shops, doing meetings. D do I do meetings? Not really. And I can imagine for students watching this video, this is the ideal laptop to bring into the classroom. And it's hard to find fault with most of the design of the laptop. It feels premium and so well built. The Magic Keyboard is so inoffensive that you're likely to love typing on it every single moment you get. And the trackpad is the best laptop trackpad available anywhere, period. If you're used to Windows laptops, you'll be amazed at just how smooth and instant the trackpad is on a Mac laptop. And I'm just such a fan of how Mac displays look on the iMac and MacBooks, and the MacBook Air gets a display upgrade to the P3 wide color display, really making it a first class experience. Now sure, there are limitations on the MacBook Air, and there are things I don't like, like the webcam. It's only just passable now, but I would love to see Apple make the front facing camera on their Mac laptops as good as the ones on our phones. And even if it meant making the lid slightly thicker, I think that's worth the trade-off. The two USB-C ports can be hard to get used to if you used to have a laptop that had more ports, so you'll probably need to bring along an adapter to solve that issue. And the maximum of one external display connection might just be a downright deal breaker for people who don't want to give up their multi-monitor setups. But I think for most people, a single monitor is the most they'll ever hook up to this thing, if they even hook up a monitor to it at all. Now, because this MacBook is half a year old now, of course we are going to get comments on what's next for this laptop. Is there a future update I should know about? Is the Air really as good as you say it is right now, Greg? Well, like any technology purchase, there's always going to be a newer model on the horizon. And I know all too well that fear of missing out feeling. Current rumors say the next MacBook Air will address some of the shortcomings of this current design. Like an additional MagSafe charging port, even more performance with an M2 chip, the ability to connect more than one external display, and maybe an even better caliber display technology with mini LED displays. And it could also come in a new design that's even smaller and lighter than this MacBook Air, and could even feature a wide range of new colors, just like the new iMac. In fact, I made an entire video going over what to expect for this MacBook Air, so maybe after this video, you should watch that one just to see what you might potentially be missing out on, and to see if there's any features you really want on an updated model. However, that MacBook Air could still be months away, and it's likely to start at a higher price than this MacBook Air. In fact, you can get some pretty good deals on this current base model, 
Like it's $899 on Amazon as of the making of this video. And I even did a video on how to get a refurbished MacBook Air straight from Apple in amazing quality for just $850. Even if a new Air is on the horizon, you likely won't see these types of deals for months until it's been on the market. Right now, I think the MacBook Air is the best value in Apple's MacBook lineup. And I think it's probably the Mac that most people should buy right now. It's still worth it even six months later. And it really is time for most people to stop being afraid of the MacBook Air branding. I know that used to be associated with a laptop that couldn't do much, but this laptop can do so much more than you think it can. And it really is time to start buying the MacBook Air. It's an amazing laptop. All right, everyone. And that's what I think about Apple's amazing MacBook Air. Please let me know what you think about the Air in the comments below. Are you buying one after watching this video? Did I convince you? Did I, did I do it? Or did you already own one? Or do you plan to wait for the M2 MacBook Air because there's a lot of features you want with that or you just want a new redesign? Also, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, again, including future M1 content on the M1 iMac, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to help the channel out in any way, again, if you want to purchase a MacBook Air, check out some of the affiliate links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Do you guys, did you like this setup? I don't, I don't know. I was kind of, yeah, I was, I was a little bored of the other one. So I was like, I'll go film somewhere else. I think it's okay. Maybe a little too bright, it's, it's daylight. I don't know. Patrick Tommaso, you, you know, cinematographer buddy. What, what do you think?